Hello, thanks for watching this video. I'm going to show you a demo of our new game, Elementalist X, for Daydream. If you don't know what Daydream is yet, it's essentially Google's first attempt at high quality VR that's going to compete with Oculus and Samsung's Gear VR. So this is a Samsung Oculus Gear VR, as you can see, headset. Uh, the Daydream headsets are going to be similar to those but work on multiple phones. So any phone running Android N, which I believe is the seventh version of Android. Those phones aren't available yet. They're coming in the fall. They've only announced one of the phones that'll be compatible. So essentially they're new phones that are special and will be high-end phones. So expect high-end VR, at least high-end mobile VR, that is. So the difference between Samsung and uh, the Samsung uh, Gear VR and Daydream is that the Daydream is going to ship standard with a controller. So this is a development controller. So what they do is they tell you to get an old Android phone and install this app on it and then put a sticker on that so you can sort of feel what's going on. So there's a little touchpad over here you can see and then there's two buttons. One is reserved for the system and one is reserved for your app and you use this to sort of guide your uh, you know, point around and aim at things and do whatever you want in, in Gear VR. So the one thing about these controllers is that they're going to be equipped with a gyro and an accelerometer. So accelerometer for like throwing things and actions like that, gyro for aiming at things. The one thing is does it has positional tracking. So uh, aiming straight forward here and aiming straight forward over here are going to be the same input to your game. So what we're doing is we're sort of using this to aim in our game and shoot, kind of similar to what you would get with a Wii controller. So that's what you can expect from Daydream. So the one other thing is that typically when you develop for Daydream, you need an Android N phone. And um, right now they say only the Nexus is uh, compatible with the Daydream SDK. So that's not entirely true. Um, what we're doing right now is we're using a Samsung phone, we're using um, the Oculus, and then we change the SDK a bit so that we can send the data over Wi-Fi. So when you download the SDK on your PC, you can play like this on your PC, all the data is sent over Wi-Fi. When you put it on your phone, it's typically sent over Bluetooth. So we're bypassing the Bluetooth code and still sending it over Wi-Fi so that we can use our existing phones to develop. Um, the other thing that we're doing, which is kind of a bit cool about our setup, is we're using a Kinect. So I have a Kinect over here. You can see that it's set up um, to record myself playing. And so what we're doing is I'm playing on the headset with a controller and we're sending all that data over to a PC. Now that PC is rendering a second view, uh, the connect view, and therefore allowing me to, you know, film myself being in the game, which is kind of like what you've seen with certain Vive um, mixed reality videos. Uh, the cool thing about the connect is that I don't have to green screen anything. The connect green screens everything for you. So I think it's really kind of um, an underutilized tool uh, that should be, you know, readily available for game developers, indie game developers, where you can set up uh, a mixed reality experience without having a green screen in your home. So I actually just play over in this area over here. As you can see, it's not even a, it's not even a wall. It's uh, kind of an open area. And the Kinect is able to green screen all the background out. So I'm able to sort of put myself in there and uh, show you what it's like to be inside our game as you would be experiencing it if you were playing. So without further ado, I will show you the mixed reality video of Elementalist X. You can follow us on Twitter at, at CodingJar, or you can go to www.elementalistx.com and sign up for updates. Thanks very much for watching. So I start off in the tower that I'm trying to defend. And my first warp out, I get a little dialogue that tells me I can throw fireballs. So when I'm on top of the fireball tower, I can throw these fireballs. And I'm just kind of checking my range right now to see how far I can shoot. I'm using the uh, wand controller to sort of aim and different angles, of course, will give me uh, larger, longer shots.
so I'm just trying to kill all these enemies that are coming towards my uh, base, which is the tower I started in. And um, the little guys are easy to kill, and these bigger guys, they take a few more shots. So they're kind of like the, the next step up. So I've completed the first wave, and I get a little dialogue telling me that I've you know, have enough to buy uh, an ice tower. So I'm going to place my ice tower here uh, on the other side of the map because I know that side's going to be a bit weak. There's no towers over there yet. And if you build fast enough, you get sort of a speed bonus. So that's what happened there. Um, I'm on top of the ice tower right now, sort of shooting little ice traps. So these traps are going to be what the enemies walk over. They make them explode, and then they sort of slow down. So you can see here I'm just uh, using the ice to sort of fend off the first little wave of enemies here. Every time I hit them, they slow down a bit. Or again, if they walk over the ice, they slow down. I've essentially stopped those bad guys from going. I can use them to sort of defeat these enemies here. Now I've let one go on the far right, and I'm trying to attack this big guy here, and these big guys can actually come and attack you. So I'm getting a little warning that my tower is under attack, or about to be under attack, while he's also attacking me. So I'm going to go save my tower first. Uh, the guy I killed just off screen there and then go back to trying to ward off and protect these guys. So um, that big guy that attacked me earlier, he's making his way around. So I'm going to try to hit him, but I think he's a bit too far, a bit out of my reach. He's just off screen here. Power about to attack me, but since I've heard him before, I can sort of finish him off before he ever gets to me. Now I just need to finish this one guy off to clear the wave. And a new dialogue is telling me that I now have the enough money to purchase the Earth Tower. So these Earth Towers will block or, or create barriers that sort of block the enemies from progressing. And they also do damage, and when the barriers explode, they also do a small amount of damage. So um, it's a pretty powerful tower. And I'm just going to build up on this side over here. So I'm building a fireball tower just off screen because I noticed I couldn't reach uh, the enemies on that side, so it was a bit weak. And I'm going to start off by placing some of these earth towers right now. They'll begin to grow. You can actually increase the grow uh, rate by shooting them again, but I'm just kind of placing them, letting them grow on their own. And um, these guys are attacking them while they're still low health, so uh, they're dying pretty easily. These ones will take a few attacks because they're fully grown. And then I can just fend off these enemies while they're trying to attack those towers. And the Juggernauts now appeared. So this is uh, one of the bigger characters in the game. Uh, he's really powerful. He can essentially kill you in two hits. So he's taking a swipe at me, and I know I'm about to die, so I'm going to sort of warp away from him. And he's easily destroying pretty much all the barriers. I'm going to try to kill him, but he's going to take a swipe at this log here that's in the middle of the map. And I think he's going to get it. So once he destroys this log, uh, that's essentially opened up a new path. So I better... And he's going for my gate, so I better uh, sort of deal with him before he destroys my gate. Ah, uh, there we go. I've just... So he's done a bit of damage to my gate. You can see that there's a small amount of damage to my gate. There's a little hole in it. And I've got to sort of block this middle path now that he's exposed it for other enemies to go through. So I've built another earth tower. I'm going to build my own little essentially log here, um, making sure that anyone who goes through the middle has to deal with these earth traps before they're able to just walk into my uh, walk up to my gate and destroy it. So uh, what you're seeing here is this 
little ice guy is resistant to ice, so he can basically walk through those ice traps without taking any, uh, taking much damage, and the ice doesn't slow him down, so I gotta make sure that whenever he comes, I gotta switch over to something more effective. So, uh, I think that this guy's going for my gate. He is. And... I think I've just taken care of him just off screen. And then I have to deal with the big heartbreakers that attack me. So he's attacking me and I'm getting away. And dealing with the guys who are going up the center now. Just want to slow them down so that they're not going to make it to my gate. While I can finish off these heartbreakers who have a lot more health than the, than the guys in the middle. And they're going to start. They're a bit slow after hitting the ice, but they're going to try to take take away my earth barriers. I think this will this will pretty much be an easy win. I'm hearing the guy and the yeah, destroy the earth, but I'm easily going to take him out. And he's done. So that means victory. So thanks for watching the demo of Elementalist X for Daydream. Uh, hope you enjoyed it and will follow us for uh, more information. Thanks.